Go away. I don't want to see you. The doctor told me to sleep. I rarely get to interrogate a suspect with his guard down in a place as quiet as this. Getting the chance to study his body language with no distractions is a rare gift. His heart rate is increasing. It could mean that he's lying, but it could also just be pure, unadulterated rage. He's looking straight at me. If he couldn't hold my stare, I'd think he's lying, but that's not the case. He's clenching his fist. A sign of contained anger. Clenched fist. Fast heart rate. Fixed stare. He feels some genuine rage towards me. I'm sorry you don't want to see me, but... I'm afraid you'll just have to put up with me. For now. Luckily, I just got my medication. I'll be snoozing soon. All right, I'll just cut to the chase. Why did you kill Joe Dunn? What? Are you trying to confuse me? Joe hanged himself. I know the murder weapon was yours. What? The rope? I don't get it. What weapon do you mean? Don't play with me, boy. The chest expander. An expander? I've never had one of those. I know Dunn threatened to call off the fight. Why? How do you know that? I'm a detective. That was his anger talking. He never really meant it. That doesn't matter. Why was he so mad at you? What did you do? Nothing. Joe thought that I wasn't training hard enough. That I was going to lose. All right, let's just say that I, I believe you. The murderer killed Dunn with a chest expander and planted evidence to make us believe it was suicide. But he also left enough clues behind to make sure we found the true murder weapon. Then he put the chest expander box in your locker to frame you. Do you know anyone that twisted? and who also happens to have a mo- I... I don't know. Desmond O'Leary certainly seems twisted enough. Did he have anything against Dunn? I'm not sure if they knew each other. At least not in person. About a month ago, Joe kicked one of O'Leary's men out of the gym. He was trying to give a business card to- Jake Ostiambi. Yeah, exactly. Did Jake tell you about that? Something like that. What about Frank Cassidy? Do you think he has a motive? Maybe. A few weeks ago, Joe took me to a boxing manager's association meeting. Headed by Cassidy. Yeah. He was obsessed with making it illegal for boxers to fight without a manager. Or without an associated manager. Everyone seemed to go along with it until Joe spoke up. He said that would lower us to mob status. That Cassidy had founded the association just to make money by monopolizing the sport. That made others think twice. And Cassidy ended up empty-handed. Poor Cassidy. Maybe it was... What am I saying? Jake could never pull off something like that. <laughs> Nothing. Never mind. What about Sonia Dunn? Sonia? I doubt it. She's odd. But she's his daughter. I've seen worse. Believe me. Black Sad. I think I owe you an, uh... uh 
You know, my father disappeared when I was six, right after winning a fight. We never heard from him again. Do you know what that does to a kid? Who knows where I'd be if Joe Dunn hadn't been in my life. Even when I lost my way and put a gun to his head years later, he still took me under his wing and managed to steer me in the right direction. And now that he's gone, you're risking your life to find his murderer. Thanks. Thank you for... The number of cigarette butts is inversely proportional to my hours of sleep. Ah, damn. say a lot about what's going on inside a person. Is that eye movement normal? He seems restless. Should I tell someone? whatsoever. He must be having a nightmare. Are you sure? Wouldn't you have nightmares too after what he went through yesterday? I know I sure wouldn't sleep. If that's a nightmare, he only has himself to blame. Oh, the poor thing. Do you know what my nightmare is? It's that, that witch I have to work with. Oh. Good thing she's got trauma surgery at 12.30, but I wish it were a little sooner, you know? Anyway, thank you for letting me know, and, and for bringing him in. You don't know how excited I am to be involved in a criminal case. It might not be important, but... I need to take a look at his medical report. You're awake, handsome? Can I have a Morley's, please? No, but I'll sell you a pack. Honey, get me a pack of Morley's for Mr. Handsome. Yale's medical report is right there. Mind if I take a look? Mm, no, I don't think so, Hanson. What if you show me Yale's report and I buy you dinner? 
You're handsome, all right, but I'm not stupid. Footprints don't match. If Yale killed Dunn, he did it without stepping in the paint or in different shoes. Seems like the Doe nurse will be assisting Dr. Talbot during his 12.30 surgery. In four hours. Could I get them to operate any sooner? Jake, it's Black Side. Could you get... Get Dr. Gregor Talbot, please. Yes, one minute. Um, no, actually, Dr. Talbot won't be in until 12.30, according to my registry. Can I ask who's calling, please? Sherry, this is Dr. Talbot. We have to reschedule the 12.30 procedure. I want everyone in the operating room in five minutes. If anyone gives you any grief, tell them it's a matter of life or death. Understood? A matter of life and death, a matter of life and death. You gotta be kidding me.
All right, now. How do I put this? I need something that you... Oh. Only if you guess why I'm giving it to you. I think you just want to spite your fellow nurse. Well, aren't you smart? But be quick about it. You hear me, huh? If that witch comes back... What? What does it say here? Ah, oh, you know doctors. The top handwriting is mine. Let's see. Extra systole and dehydration caused by panic attack. Extra what? You know, arrhythmia, like skipped heartbeats. What about this here? It's a good thing I know that Mr. Yale is in Dr. Ferguson's hands. Otherwise, I'd be worried. Hey, no means no, miss. You really don't know who I am, do you? Miss, I've got orders. And the fact is, those orders say that... There you are, Miss Dunn. Huh? Tell him, Black Sad. I can't get through that thick skull of his. You see, hi, Phil. This is my assistant, Jerry. Assistant? How so? She's helping me with the investigation. Between you and me, and all due respect, miss, but aren't we taking this woman's liberation a little too far? All right, go ahead. I guess it's her business after all. Your assistant? <laughs> you think I'd make a good detective? Indeed. You're cold and cunning. Two of our hallmark traits. I see tact is not one of those traits. Anyway, you did your job. I'll send you a check the day after the fight. You can leave now. Why did you come? What are you doing here? Please, tell me, why are you here? She's gonna do something stupid. Sonia, don't. You killed my father. You said so yourself. Your father wouldn't want you to do this. He was a just man, and this is not justice. He almost killed you in that Lucy's apartment. How could he not be guilty? You can't take justice into your own hands. Believe me, it will haunt you as long as you live. Shut up! None of that matters! How could he not be guilty? Your father sacrificed everything to pay your way through college. If you do this, you'll destroy the future your father wanted you to have. <sighs> It's okay. <clears throat> Uncle Tim! Sweetie, I came back from Los Angeles as soon as I could. I told you not to rush back. Come on now, honey. Aren't you going to introduce me to your friend? No, this is John Blacksad, the detective who found Bobby. Oh, so this is strictly professional. I thought you had some good news for your uncle. No, Uncle Tim, don't be silly. Don't be silly? Look at you, smart, educated, as dazzling as the brightest of stars. Every single man in this city should be at your feet. Come on, we'd better let him rest. Hmm. 
Hmm. Hmm. I see. Let's say you're right and Bobby Yale is innocent. Who should we focus on now? We? Well, your father turned down my money, but he made me promise one thing, that I'd take care of you if anything happened to him. But I can... I know you're perfectly capable of managing that gym on your own, but we don't even know if he'll be ready to fight Stone. Besides, someone seems really invested in stopping that fight, and someone has to pay Mr. Blacksad to get to the bottom of all this. Please, talk some sense into her. It's your life. As much as you love your uncle, it's up to you to decide whether you want his help or not. Black said, I was just starting to like you. All right. Thank you, Uncle. Thank you so much. All right. Stop crying or you'll ruin your makeup, honey. Now fix yourself up and I'll buy you some breakfast. Uh, wait. My purse. I'll get it. It must Black be... Black said, wait a minute. I think she needs some time alone. Just like you and me. Listen, boy. Do whatever it takes to find Joe's murder. Whatever it takes. If things get messy, don't worry. I'll clean them up. Deal? Sure. I'll do my best. Thank you. I trust you to get that ball to the end zone. No. Are you telling stories about the great iron arm again? Wait a minute. Of course. The Milestones quarterback. Tim Iron Arm <laughs> Thorpe. <laughs> it's a good thing folks usually recognize me sooner. Black said, you coming to breakfast? I'd love to, but I have to go ask for a favor. The investigation required that I ask Jake for a small favor. Or demand it, if worse came to worst. 